guys and welcome to Hatta Gastro. In today's video, we'll be talking about Hepatitis C. So let's get right into it. So before we get into the specifics of Hepatitis C itself, let's do a quick review on what is Hepatitis. So Hepatitis is the inflammation of the tissue of the liver. The most common cause of the disease is by viral infection However, the disease can also occur secondary to heavy alcohol intake, certain medications, toxins, other infectious diseases, autoimmune diseases, and there's also some non-alcoholic steatohepatitis causes, which is basically the liver inflammation and damage that is caused by a buildup of fat in the liver. So from this definition, we get that hepatitis means the inflammation of the liver. So in my picture on the left, we have this picture of a healthy liver and below we can see what hepatitis looks like. You can see the liver is inflamed and quite enlarged and the tissue is actually affected on a structural level. So just to review a few causes, most commonly hepatitis is caused by viral infections such as hepatitis A, B, C, D and E. Today we're going to focus on hepatitis C virus only. But there are other causes such as heavy alcohol intake, certain medications, autoimmune diseases, etc. So now that we know what hepatitis is, let's take a closer look at the viral causes of hepatitis. So viral hepatitis is classified into five different types because each of them express different symptoms and therefore require different treatments. There are five main types of viral hepatitis. They are hepatitis virus type A, type B, type C, type D, and type E. So I have done a video on type A and B and if you want to check that out, you can give those videos a watch. I'll put a link for them in the description. But today's video will focus specifically on hepatitis C. So let's begin our presentation now on hepatitis C. So what is hepatitis C? Hepatitis C is a serious liver infection that is caused by the hepatitis C virus, which is also known as HCV. The virus can cause both acute and chronic infections. The disease is said to be acute if it lasts less than six months or chronic if it lasts more than six months. Something important to note is that about 80% of people exposed to the virus will develop a chronic infection. Having chronic hepatitis C can be very serious as it may lead to the development of liver failure, liver cancer or liver cirrhosis which is a condition that permanently scars the liver. So in my picture on the left we have the normal liver and this is when the HCV infection can be acquired. So this image basically shows the progression of the viral infection. From the normal liver, we will have an acute phase of hepatitis, which will then go to chronic hepatitis and liver cirrhosis, and then it can lead to a hepatocellular carcinoma, end-stage liver disease, and also death. But you see here, there is quite some time about 20 to 25 years before the extreme cirrhosis sets in and then 25 to 30 years after the initial infection in which we could have end-stage liver disease or a hepatocellular carcinoma. So in hepatitis C, we can have an acute or a chronic infection and most people who are actually infected with the disease don't actually know they're infected. And this is because hepatitis C doesn't actually manifest with debilitating signs and symptoms in most patients. So most patients don't actually know they have the virus or the disease. If our body can fight the infection within six months after being infected with the virus, it is known as an acute form. And if the virus is prolonged and lasts more than six months, it means our body isn't able to fully fight off the virus and it will lead to a chronic hepatitis C virus. And this actually happens in about 80% of people infected with HCV. So the majority of people will go on to develop chronic hepatitis and over many years will develop liver cirrhosis as well as end-stage liver disease or a hepatocellular carcinoma. So this is why hepatitis C is actually quite an interesting disease and it's actually very important to be tested for if you do suspect that you may have the disease. So now let's talk about the causes of hepatitis C virus. The hepatitis C virus is present primarily in the blood and to a lesser degree in specific other bodily fluids of the infected person. The virus is inactive until it enters the living cell of the host. Once it gains entry, it hijacks the hardware of the cell to make copies of itself. And the main ways in which the virus is spread by is intravenous drug use, and it is believed that approximately 10 million of IV drug users are infected with hepatitis C, sexual intercourse, 
the transmission of the hepatitis C virus may occur via sexual fluid exchange, healthcare exposure, blood transfusions, transfusion of blood products, or organ transplants without HCV screening carry a significant risk of infection, shared personal items, razors, toothbrushes, or manicuring equipment can be contaminated with blood and therefore these items can potentially lead to the development of HCV, mother-to-child transmission, and this occurs in less than 10% of pregnancies, and finally, tattoos and piercings. The virus can also be transmitted via contaminated tattoo or piercing needles. So, if you look at this image on my left, we see that the main cause of the spread of the hepatitis C virus is actually by IV drug users. Next in line, we have sexual transmission with 15%. Then we have transfusion of blood products or blood itself or organ transplants with coming in at 10%. And then we have occupational at 4% and this is healthcare workers or healthcare exposure. And then there are some other ways or unknown ways such as tattoos and piercings, mothers to child, shared personal items such as razors, toothbrush, manicuring, equipment, etc. So now let's get into some signs and symptoms of hepatitis C. Since most people with acute hepatitis C go on to develop a chronic hepatitis C, meaning the virus remains in the body for at least six months or longer, and they still experience no hepatitis C symptoms, it's common for them to have the infection for 15 years or longer before being diagnosed. If present, symptoms may include sudden nausea and vomiting, abdominal pain or discomfort, especially in the upper right side beneath the lower ribs, and this is where the liver is located in the body. The patient may experience clay-colored bowel stools or dark urine, a loss of appetite and fatigue, low-grade fever and joint pain, a yellowing of the skin and the whites of the eyes, which is called jaundice, having intense itching, or experiencing encephalopathy. So if you look at this image on my top right corner, it says 70 to 80% of people with hepatitis C don't show any symptoms. And this is very, very important because if the patients don't experience any signs and symptoms, they don't know that they actually have the disease. And even when the infection does become chronic, it takes a long time for these specific signs and symptoms to actually appear. And therefore, it's very important to diagnose the patient as soon as possible to prevent any serious complications of the disease itself. The diagnosis of hepatitis C. Laboratory evaluation of hepatitis C disease generally consists of liver enzyme tests, and this test includes testing the levels of alanine aminotransferase, which is known as ALT, aspartate aminotransferase, which is known as AST, alkaline phosphatase, which is known as ALP, gamma glutamyl transpeptidase, which is known as GGT, as well as the liver function test that include the total and direct serum bilirubin, albumin levels, and the international normalized ratio, which is the INR. So the top four are actually enzymes that are produced in response to liver damage. So if that virus is causing a chronic inflammation of that liver and the structure of the liver is changing and there's some sort of a liver failure, these enzymes will be elevated in the blood. The amount of bilirubin will also go up and this is usually noticed clinically as the yellowing of the skin of the patients. The albumin levels will decrease and that is because the liver actually produces albumin, which is a protein. And if the liver is having difficulty in carrying out its normal functions, the production of these proteins will also drop. And the INR is the international normalized ratio and it basically measures how long it takes the blood to clot. And the liver actually is responsible for producing certain clotting factors that help our blood clot. So if these factors aren't being able to be produced by the liver because the liver is undergoing some sort of a liver failure now because of this virus being attacking it so fiercely, we're also going to have a change in the INR of the patient. So continuing with the diagnosis of hepatitis C, we can also do antibody detection. So the first way we could check for the infection is a blood test for the hepatitis C antibody. These serological assays detect the anti-HCV Ig antibodies generated as a response to the hepatitis C virus infection. So if you look at this yellow line here, this is actually the anti-HCV antibody. And you can see if this is the initial infection at zero, you can see that after approximately three to four months, the anti-HCV starts increasing and can help us to diagnose a hepatitis C virus. We could also use the blood test to look for specific antigens. And the HCV RNA is detectable in serum or plasma as early as one week after exposure. 
and therefore remains the most reliable marker and is the gold standard for the diagnosis of an active HCV infection. So if you look at this red line here, we have the HCV RNA and this will tell us if we have an ongoing active infection and will remain elevated for at least six months after exposure. So another way we can use to diagnose a hepatitis C is to evaluate the structure of the liver and for this we can use the imaging or staging studies and here we have two methods which are the abdominal ultrasound or the vibration control transient elastography such as the FibroMax or the FibroScan. So this device can actually tell us how far gone the disease has gone in terms of evolution and if we have the process of fibrosis which is called liver cirrhosis or if we have the development of the hepatocellular carcinoma these devices can help us to actually stage the disease at that point. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of hepatitis C. So something I haven't really mentioned here in this presentation, and that's quite important, is that no vaccine is currently available for hepatitis C. But there are many trying to be developed and being tested currently. So when we talk about the treatment of hepatitis C in acute infections, the treatment with antiviral medication usually isn't needed. And that is because most people actually don't know that they have the virus. But treatment for the chronic hepatitis C may include pegylated interferon. And interferon is similar to a protein that the body makes to fight the infection. And pegylated interferon is a long-acting form of interferons that is administered as an injection. It was initially used alone, but later was always used with ribavirin. So ribavirin is taken by mouth and can never be used alone to treat hepatitis C. Initially, it was used in combination with interferon with increased chances of getting rid of the virus from the body. Presently, it's used in combination with one of the newly approved drugs, and these medications include the NS3 or 4 targeting protease inhibitors such as bosepravir, telaprevir, or simeprevir, or the NS5B targeting polymerase inhibitors, nucleotide forms such as sofosprevir, and the non-nucleotide forms such as tesaprevir. And then finally, we can also use the NS5A targeting agents such as Lidiposphere, Teclatosphere, and Ombitosphere. And that brings us to the end of this video on Hepatitis C. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. If you would like to download a copy of the presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. And I'll also put some links in the description for the liver function testing, the video I did on bilirubin and jaundice, and the videos on hepatitis A and B. Take care and bye for now.